Hello everybody and welcome back. Today we will talk about the transport systems in the higher plants. And as we mentioned before, the more complex the organism becomes, the more its transport system is complex. Actually, the uh, main sites of transport in the higher plants are the xylem and the phloem. So that both of them act like arteries and veins in the human body because the xylem translocates the water and the mineral salts absorbed from the root hair system upwards to the plant stem, leaves, fruits and so on. Then when the plant uses these materials absorbed by the uh, xylem together with the sunlight it produces the high energy compounds such as the carbohydrates, the fats and the proteins. Then these organic compounds produced from the plant move through the phloem tissues through something called the sieve tubes or sieve plates found inside the phloem through various parts of consumption such as the fruits, the stem and so on. So in order to illustrate more the uh, transport in higher plants, I'll do a transverse section in the stem of a dicot plant. And by the way, dicot means a plant that gives seeds with two cotyledons. So it's called a dicot plant. So first we'll do the epidermis. Then here we have the, the, the pericycle. Then we have here a layer called cambium. And here we have Parenchyma cells. Here all over this place, and this is closed. Dendrites. So this is actually 
the stem looks like this and there are vessel or bundles cylindrical in shape with the base outwards and the vertex is downwards so actually this is one of them which was enlarged like this here in the drawing so the first thing is the cutene layer the second is the epidermis and the epidermis is a row of adjacent bell shaped cells which are covered by a layer of a cuticle or cutein the second layer is called the colonchema and the colonchema cells are cells which the words are supported by the deposition of cellulose so these places are not empty they contain cellulose and so they act as a mechanical tissue for strengthening the plant and give it more um, rigidity uh, the next layer is called the parenchyma and these uh, parenchyma cells are just like the colonchyma but without this deposition of cellulose so there are spaces here empty for aeration and the next thin layer here is called the stars uh, should and apparently from its name it's used for the storage of starch and these three layers collectively are called the cortex of the plant so this layer doesn't have anything to do with the transport but the next do here we have a layer called the pericycle and this pericycle is a row of adjacent parenchyma cells for um, just giving the plant elasticity and uh, it helps as a mechanical tissue also the next layer is the phloem that we have just mentioned as we said that the phloem helps in translocating the organic uh, substances made by the plant to all the consumption parts and the phloem consists of the phloem tissue consists of sieve plates and sieve tubes with a companion cell and we will talk about this structure in the next videos the next layer is called the cambium and this cambium um, consists of meristematic cells and the meristematic cells are cells that are growing up so it provides the flow with new tissues upwards and it provides the xylem vessels with new tissues inwards so it provides outwards the flow and insides for the xylem vessels here we have um, metazylem and protozylem they are kinds of xylem that um, varies according to the, the size of the xylem vessel tube so these xylem vessels are hollow tubes that are used for the transport of water and mineral source from the root system to all the parts of the plant. Well actually they are, uh, were formed of cells in which the protoplasm was killed and the uh, walls between the cells was removed so it made hollow vessels which are used for the purpose of translocation of water and mineral source. Uh, also, the, wa the walls of the xylem vessels are strong walls because they are supported by lignin. Lignin. Supported by the deposition of lignin at the walls. And this lignin has annual and spiral shapes. So, it's deposited in the walls by several shapes and this structure helps in strengthening the wall of the xylem vessels uh, the xylem vessels has uh, also another type which is called the trochaeids and apparently the xylem vessels are open they are widely open while the trochaeids are pointed have pointed ends
So they are not joined together, they have pointed ends. And this is the difference between the dalim uh, vessels and trachees. The next part in the structure is called the dalim parenchyma, these cells. And actually, this xylem parenchyma acts as a, a mean of connection between the xylem inside the stem and the xylem which is found in the leaves and in the fruits and all the other parts of the plant. So, it helps in the connection between this xylem and the other xylem. Also, the parenchyma cells in, all over the plant help in the connection between the phloem tissues also inside the stem and the uh, phloem tissues in the other parts of the plant. Um, our last is this row of cells here, uh, which is called middleary rays, middleary rays, and here this is the pith, you know, the inner part of the stem, the center of the stem. So the middle layer rays helps in the connection between the fifth tissues and the cortex tissues of the plant. And by the way, the fifth is also formed of parenchyma cells for the purpose of storage. And uh, this was the transport in higher plants. It was a transversal section, a TS, in the root of a die cut plant. The next time we will talk about the uh, method that the plant used for the translocation of water and mineral salts from the root hair to the leaves and how does the water ascend through this way. And until then, I thank you for watching and see you next time.